today we could talk about the college admissions process kind of the whole application and how to make yourself an appealing student i know that this may seem kind of early to some people to be talking about this but i know that i personally was super stressed out about college admissions like my freshman year and then especially the summer going into my senior year I remember I was on a family trip I was in Europe I was on a train in all this beautiful countryside and I was just sitting there like about to burst into tears typing on my phone writing my common app essay because I could not handle the fact that I was not working on my college stuff because it seemed so imminent even though my applications weren't due for like five months okay so a little background information on myself that way you can kind of relate this to yourself I am a rising college freshman at Tufts University. I'm from a relatively small town in Southeast Texas and I went to high school at this really big public school. We were 6A, meaning that my incoming freshman class had over 700 kids and then I graduated with 517 kids. So very much a standard public school, moderate to subpar academics, very kind of normal not anything special so where i applied and where i got in so i applied early decision to tufts university in medford massachusetts meaning that it was my absolute number one choice i was 100 percent sure about it because early decision means that you send in your application about two months prior to when you would send in your other applications and then you hear back about a month and a half later so my decision date was december 15th which is when i heard back from the university if you get into the university then you are legally bound by a contract to actually attend that university the following fall. So you only apply early decision if you are absolutely 1000% sure that, that is where you want to go to school. And this is not something to take lightly at all. You have to make sure that you're financially sound in order to be able to attend that school regardless of your financial aid situation because you are legally bound to go there. When you get into a college early decision, it means that you actually have to rescind or take back your applications to any other colleges. So I actually didn't find out where I got into other than Tufts and then my two schools that I applied early action to. Early action is kind of like early decision except that it's not legally binding and you find out a couple weeks later. So I applied early action to Northeastern, which was my second choice, and then Clark University, which was a safety for me. And so I heard back from those about two days after I got my acceptance from Tufts. So I know that I got into both Northeastern and Clark, but I don't know about any of the other schools I applied to. Because I was so in love with Tufts and I knew that I wanted to go there so badly, I knew that if I didn't get in when decisions came out, I would not personally be in the kind of place to fill out all these other applications. So I turned in all of my applications by November 1st, not just Tufts. The other schools I applied to are Wesleyan, Brown, Northeastern, NYU, Brandeis, UT Austin, because I'm from Texas, even though I had automatic admin. I think that was pretty much it. Those were kind of the only schools that were really on my radar. I did not hear back from any of those schools except for Northeastern and Clark, but I do know that I got into both of those schools and I got into Tufts. So I was three for three, so that felt good. But you know, I don't actually know about any of my other schools that I applied to. So for about half of this video, I'm going to be talking about what you can kind of do during high school to try and make yourself an appealing applicant to admissions officers. So if you are a rising senior or you're currently a junior and you're watching this in the middle of the year or whatever and you're kind of in too deep to really be able to put any of these tips to use then you can just skip to this time right here and that is where I will be talking about the actual application process itself so I will see you then okay so making yourself an appealing applicant so you're going into your freshman year it's all super exciting and everything you're getting ready to pick all your classes so you 1000% need to take as many advanced classes as you possibly can your freshman sophomore junior and senior year I know that going into my school I was really nervous because I know that I was planning on applying to all these big name colleges that because I didn't go to some fancy prep school I didn't have an infinite range of AP courses to be able to take that they weren't going to accept me that I wasn't going to be a good enough of a student for them to take because I didn't take AP Calculus freshman year and AP Environmental Science and Biology and AP Physics all in the same year and all this crazy stuff. So I'm here to tell you that that is not what matters. 
admissions officers are going to be aware of what is offered at your school. So if you only have two AP classes and you take both of those AP classes, then admissions officers will see that you did the best that you could do to get an education in your situation. Not everyone is financially able or even has a big private school around them to be able to attend. Admissions officers aren't going to punish you for not being in a situation where you can attend one of those schools. So what you need to do is just make the best of your situation and take the classes that are available to you to make yourself a better applicant. Same thing if you do go to one of those schools. If you go to one of those great prep schools and you're not taking advantage of all the opportunities provided for you, then they will see that. They will see that you had all of these chances to take more difficult classes, to push yourself, to go do an internship and that you didn't do it. And that will reflect on you and your ambition and how much they want you to be at their school. Admissions officers want to see that you are working hard, that you have dedication, that you are motivated, that you have ambitions, and that you are putting those into work before you even get into college because that's the kind of student they want. They obviously get good grades, get good test scores, you know, work hard, study, and do test prep. Obviously grades are a huge part of getting into college. Regardless of whether or not academic grades actually reflect your intelligence or your creativity or just anything about you as an intellectual, that is the only thing that admissions officers have to go off of to judge your intelligence and to judge how smart you are. You have to make sure that those are as high and as good as possible. Do not, do not, do not, do not blow off your freshman year. Freshman year is super easy to just kind of take it casual because you know you're just in a couple of pre-AP classes, everything is pretty chill, you're just kind of figuring everything out, everything is fine, everything is casual, no AP classes or anything. But if you blow off your freshman year, it will just completely mess up your GPA. You cannot slack off your freshman year because if you do, it will completely mess up your GPA for the rest of your high school. You can work on it, you can improve it. You want to get that GPA as high as you possibly can your freshman year whenever it's gonna be the easiest. Whenever you're in your upper level classes, it's okay if you get some low A's and it won't like kill your grade because you got a bunch of 99s your freshman year rather than if you got low A's your freshman year because it didn't take that much effort and you were still getting decent grades even without trying too hard. Now you don't have that buffer whenever you're in more difficult classes when you're older. When it comes to test prep, if you don't have the money for a test prep book or a test prep class, it all just kind of makes your GPA gradually go down and go down rather than the people who did push themselves their freshman year and did work hard and had that GPA set high. That way they had a buffer for whenever they were in more difficult classes. My recommendation would be the Princeton Review, by the way. There are also a bunch of amazing free resources. My number one choice would definitely be Khan Academy. They have a ton of stuff for PSAT prep, SAT prep, ACT prep, your AP classes, and just everything. They're a great free resource, and I highly suggest them. Next tip is to be involved. Everyone is always talking about this well-rounded student that all of the colleges want, that everyone wants to accept, the perfect student. You know, they're an athlete, they're an academic, they're social, they're involved in church and all of that stuff. And everyone kind of gets this idea that, that they need to be doing like 20 different things to be able to be a good applicant and that's just not true. So rather than doing 10 things throughout your entire high school experience, I think that it's best to kind of explore your options freshman year and then find two or three things that you're really passionate about. It is much better to just do a couple of things rather than a ton. You won't be able to be putting in the amount of effort and the amount of contribution that you could if you're doing 10 different things. So you're giving 10% effort to 10 things and you're obviously not being as good of a member or a participant as if you were doing two or three things and you're giving much more effort and you're contributing much more to the organization as a whole. Secondly, you just won't be having a good time. College is super exciting and it's a big step and you should be working for it and you should have ambitions but that can't be what your entire high school career is about this is four years of your life this is going to be starting to mold you as a person and so you can't just be doing everything in order to try and get into college you need to do stuff to make you happy and to make you fulfilled if you're doing a bunch of stuff that you don't care about then you're not going to feel that way you're going to be unhappy on paper you're not going to be the person that you are in real life and so then that's just going to be a big old mess because you're going to get into schools that don't really want the kind of person that you are, they want the kind of person you are on paper and all that stuff and it's just not a good time. Perhaps the most important is that if you're doing a bunch of things, you won't be able to be putting in that effort into what you're passionate about and what you're passionate about is what you're going to be writing your supplemental essays on in your application. 
So in your college application, you have your standard Common App essay. I believe it is a 650 word limit. In addition to that, that all of your schools will be getting, individual schools will more than likely have supplemental essays, which are 100 to 150 words, where they're asking you more personal questions about yourself, stuff that they want to know to be able to figure out if they want to let you in or not. One of those supplements will almost always be to talk about something that you're passionate about, an extracurricular that made a deep impact on you, something that is really important to you. So if you're doing a bunch of different things and you don't have the time to care about any of them then you won't be able to write a good essay you're doing key club you're doing soccer you're doing coexist you're doing GSA you're doing interact you're doing all of this stuff and then you're getting ready to write an essay and all you really have to say is yeah I was in key club I volunteered a lot because I had to get my hours that way I could technically be in the club and put it on my application that isn't what a college wants to see a college wants to see the depth of you I'm gonna talk about this later but the whole point of your college application is to give yourself depth and give yourself a personality and make yourself a real person for the admissions officer that way they wanted to accept you they want to fight for you and so if you are just not doing anything that you actually care about then you'll just write a very subpar bland basic essay that they'll read a hundred of in a day and that isn't what you want and you want to be remembered and so you have to do something that you're extremely passionate about if you don't have an organization about what you're passionate about in your school or in your area then make it I personally started my own club my senior year it was extremely rewarding made for a great essay it was just an amazing thing and so you know if you're into photography if you're into marine biology if you're into hunting whatever you are passionate about take that and do something with it show that you have leadership skills show that you are motivated and do what you want and make yourself happy and also make yourself an appealing applicant to admissions officers so within all these organizations more than likely you will have a staff member who will be kind of in charge of you whether that is a sponsor or if the president of your club or organization is a teacher or a member of the administration or you know your church leader your pastor whatever you need to make connections with them because those are the people who are going to be writing your recommendation letters and recommendation letters matter they matter a lot and so you need to be making these connections with your teachers that way they can write you a personal letter because admissions officers every day see the same letter oh susie is a great student she always turns in her work da 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 da, da. but they don't want that they want to see that you are an active learner, that you are intrigued in what you're learning about, that you are passionate, that you want to learn, that you are engaged in class. But they're not gonna see that kind of letter unless you're engaged with your teachers and you're active in your organizations and you make these connections because otherwise your teachers are just not going to have anything to write about and they're not trying to make you not get into college it's just if they don't know you personally then they won't have anything to be able to say about you personally same goes for your counselor now i completely flubbed on this and this is one of my biggest regrets in high school which is that i did not know my counselor at all and counselor recommendations i found out on my college tours are apparently a very big deal i had as i told you earlier 500 to 700 kids in my class throughout the couple of years i was in the top 20 of my class i was involved and my counselor did not know my name did not know my name did not know who i was didn't know anything about me and that was because I took it upon myself to do everything and I could do it and I did it and I did it well and everything turned out fine but because I took everything upon myself and I didn't interact with her up until my senior year when I was needing transcripts and recommendations and everything I didn't have that personal relationship with her so I didn't have a great recommendation letter from my counselor not again that she was trying to sabotage me or that she didn't want me to get into college but she just didn't know me and so that's something that you have to make an active effort into doing if you go into a big school like you have to make that effort to just go in every once in a while hey how are you doing how is it going with you classes are going really well da -da 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 -da. get to know your counselor and form that relationship even if it's just five minutes once every two or three months that will make a huge difference in getting that good recommendation letter whenever you're getting ready to apply okay so now to the juicy stuff the actual application itself first I want to talk about what kind of the whole purpose of your application is so obviously you know that 
the admissions officers are going to get your transcript. They're going to see your GPA, they're going to see your test scores, they're going to see your grades and everything. And so your application is about going beyond that. The admissions officer is going to see hundreds of applications a day. So the fact that you have a 4.0 GPA isn't going to stand out to them. What's going to stand out to them is what you're writing, what makes you a real person, what gives you depth, what makes you honest, what makes you genuine. And so that's what all of your supplements in your Common App essay and just your entire application as a whole other than your actual transcript is about. How the kind of admissions process works is that typically out of school you're going to have regional people. So you're going to have a regional admissions officer that will be in charge of your area. It'll be a couple states or you know an international person and they will sit there and they will read your application and they will kind of make little stacks of you know who they like, who they don't like that much, who they really don't like. And then all the admissions officers will gather around in a table and they will go around and they will talk about all the applicants that they read and they will all vote as a group. And so the way to get into that school is to have your admissions officer fight for you in that decision room. So you have to give yourself a personal connection with that admissions officer. You have to make them care about you and see that you're a real person and you want to make them want to let you in their school. So the whole point of your application is going to be to make yourself real and give yourself depth. That way your admissions officer will fight for you in that room and hopefully get you into your dream school. Okay, so first off, I hate kind of saying this, but it is important that you need to be reasonable in where you are applying. You're gonna have three types of schools that you apply to. You're gonna have your reach, your attainable, and your safety schools. And so you wanna have the most in that kind of middle range, because those are the places that you fit into their test scores, you should be able to get in. So admissions are weird, and so you might not get in. And then you have your reaches, those top schools with the crazy acceptance rates, and like barely anyone gets in. And you have your safety schools, where those are places that like something went terribly wrong if you didn't get into that school and so that is how you will ensure that you have options and you have choices whenever you do get your acceptances and rejections and you have options of places where you can go so within that you have to figure out what your reaches your mid-range and your safety schools are going to be and so a lot of that will have to do with your gpa and your test scores so you do have to be aware of your school's stats and where you fall within them whether you're above average in that mid 50 percent or if you're in the bottom 25 percent not saying that that should deter you from applying to a school if that's where you want to apply just because you're in the bottom 25 percent of school stats doesn't mean you can't get in because 25% of that student population has those kinds of scores. So just be aware if you fall into a school statistics and then kind of take that into consideration as you're figuring out where you want to apply and how many of those types of schools you want to apply to. Okay, so this is a big one in my opinion. You should only apply to schools that you would actually want to go to. There are two types of people who typically end up over applying. You have people who have application fee waivers and you have people who very specifically do not have application fee waivers. And there are a bunch of reasons why you should not just apply to every school and check off the boxes and write these supplements. First of all, like we talked about earlier, how you're going to make your application stand out is through your supplements. Applying to a bunch of different schools makes it a lot harder to put effort into the individual applications because, again, like I said earlier, those supplements are what's going to make your application stand out and what's going to make you an individual and a real person. In figuring out where you would actually want to go to, um, there are a couple of different options. You can just kind of go around and fish around the school website, but you know, that doesn't really do that much in my opinion because obviously every school is going to say that they're great on their own website. Site. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend visiting the campus if you have any opportunity to. The place that I ended up applying early decision to, the place where I'm going to school, I knew absolutely nothing about it other than that it vaguely existed before I toured and I left knowing without a doubt 100% that that was where I wanted to go to school. So visiting a school can make a huge difference. And also an online tool that I found really helpful was College Confidential which sounds kind of dumb and you kind of feel stupid when you're on it, but it is so helpful because it is a lot of parents, but it's also a lot of students that are telling you what the specific environment is, the 
um, different Zoom organizations and what kind of the whole vibe is there, which is what you don't really get to see when you're just on a school's website and you can't tour, then that's where you want to kind of go to College Confidential and find out what the students are saying and how the environment really is when you're actually on campus because that will definitely help you decide whether or not that is a good place for you. Okay, so more on supplements, which obviously, if you haven't been able to tell so far, are a pretty big deal. Pretty much every school that has a supplement will have a Y Blink supplement. So, you know, a Y NYU supplement, Y Tufts, Y Brown, Y, you know, whatever school that you're applying to because they want to know why do you want to go to this school? What makes you a good fit for this school? What about this place is good for you? What about it intrigues you? Why should we want to let you in? Why do you want to go here? A great tip that I was told by someone at some point, I don't really remember who it was, but that if you're writing a why whatever supplement and after you're done, you can switch the name of that university with that of another and it still works, then you need to change it because it is too generic. So remember again that admissions officers are reading hundreds of these applications a day. So if they're reading another supplement saying, the campus is beautiful, the people are nice, the academics are great, they're challenging, then that's not going to stand out to them. That's going to show them that you don't really know, you don't really care, and that they don't really want you at their school because they want kids at their school that want to be there. So how you can do that, how you can make an appealing why whatever supplement, whether or not you actually are passionate about this, because you know, your safety schools typically you're not super gung-ho about going there, but you still need to have a good supplement because you know, you can get scholarships and stuff and that's good. Free money is good. So how you can do that is you can kind of do some investigating. If you tour the school, take notes take notes on what they put emphasis on some of their programs any professors that you meet look at this on the website maybe find their like motto or mantra or their like mission statement find their mission statement find some programs that you're really interested in some professors drop those names in your supplement and suddenly it will just be raised to a whole new level so you can go from saying that the academics are great to saying that the academics are great I would love to be in a class with said professor and suddenly the admissions officer will see that you put in the effort and you went out of your way to find out more information about their school and that you are interested in it and that will make them remember you a lot more because it's showing that you actually want to go to their school and no school wants to let in kids who don't want to be there no one wants to have a school that everyone is just kind of lukewarm about and so you have to make it seem like you really want to go there even if you don't actually want to go there that much okay so my last and arguably the most important tip I will be telling you today is to spend your time on your writing because like I said earlier you know every school is gonna get your transcript they're gonna get your GPA and your grades most of the kids who are applying to a school are within the range of that school you're gonna have a couple of superstars with like phenomenal you know like six point something GPAs like, well I don't know or someone who is like barely scraping by really trying to get in you know with like every fiber of hope in their being most of the kids that apply to your school are gonna be within that same range so your scores and your GPA and your grades are not going to necessarily be what makes you stand out. It is your writing that will. You just need to spend time on it. You cannot dilly dally. You can't wait until the last minute. You can't just spit it out in a half hour. Spend a couple of weeks, just a couple minutes a day, just kind of working on it and filtering through it. Have a couple of people read it and that will make your essay a lot better. So whenever you are writing your comment app essay especially, do not be afraid to get personal. If you cry, then it's probably going to be a good essay. You need to get personal to show that you've been through real stuff, that you have depth, and that you're a real person. If you let that admissions officer into your life, they'll feel so much more connected to you and they will want to let you in if you show them that you are real and that you have real stuff going on and you have passions, you want to do things with your life. Okay, so while you're writing your essay, not only do you want to kind of get personal, you also want to make sure that you show your personality. If you're kind of a weird, goofy kind of person, then you don't want to portray yourself as being this stoic, proper person because that's not who you are. Have it be reflective of you as a person because you are talking to your admissions officer. You're not writing a research paper about yourself. You are talking to your admissions officer and trying to tell them why they should let you into their school. What makes you such a great individual? What makes you you? Similarly, 
if you are very much kind of a, a dry sense of humor, if you keep to yourself, then don't try and force that. Don't try and fake that because it will definitely show because if that's not the kind of person you are, then that's not the way that you would write and it's not the way that you would talk to someone and they'll be able to tell that it's fake and that it's not genuine. Don't be afraid to brag about yourself. I know that it can feel kind of douchey being like, oh yeah, I'm so smart, I'm so nice, I'm a great person, I'm funny. But that's kind of what you have to do. The application reader is trying to get a sense of you as a person and you obviously want to showcase your best qualities and so just kind of come to terms with that and look into yourself and find your best qualities try and showcase those as much as possible and when it comes to your supplements don't just try and tell them what you think that they want to hear because like i just said it's what you think they want to hear and so it's what a lot of kids are saying and so they're reading the same thing over and over and over and over again all day and they're not going to remember you as opposed to someone else and one of your supplements is asking you to tell the admissions officer about experience in your life that um, had a big impact on you. Instead of doing a bland story, and I know that, that sounds kind of harsh because it's a story about your life and everything about your life is interesting, but instead of doing something that you know could possibly happen to other people, try to think of an experience that is very singular to you. I know someone who wrote his story or wrote his supplement about a time that he was lost in Taiwan, I believe, trying to figure out the bus system and how like the lessons he learned from that and all that kind of stuff. So even if you didn't necessarily really learn a life lesson from it, if you have an interesting story to tell, then you can tell that story and then kind of bring in a life lesson with it just to kind of keep it more interesting. Cause an admissions officer is gonna be bored. They're gonna have read a million of these in the past couple of days and so you want to get their attention and you want to make them remember you that way they'll fight for you whenever they're in the admissions room so they'll be going through going through oh look it's john smith i remember him he told that crazy story about the time that he was in a mall and he met a police officer and he ended up helping them solve some murder case so i don't know don't be afraid to take risks either so you know how sometimes you'll be trying to write a supplement and you'll feel like it's very confined because you have to seem like you're this scholarly person that you're this this refined student who never does anything other than study. Again, you are trying to be remembered. You are trying to make that connection and you are trying to be fought for. So take a risk. This one guy who got into Tufts, who is in my class of Tufts 2021, who for one of his supplements just sent in a link to a YouTube video of him doing parkour. And that was his that was his supplement. That was a supplement. And I mean he got into this school with a 14% acceptance rate with something kind of weird and wild like that. So don't be afraid to do something kind of off-center. They're getting the same stuff every day of what people think that they want to hear and see, but that's not what they want. What they want is to see you and to see who you are and learn about your quirks and just things about you as a person, not the same things that they can read in your transcript, that they can read in your activities and everything. You don't want your supplements in your essay to just be repeating all the stuff that they have throughout the rest of the application. So the rest of the application, you're going to have what organizations you are in, you're volunteering, all that kind of stuff. You don't want your supplements to just be repeating that. They already know that. They already read that. They already read that on 10 hundred other kids' applications. They see your extracurriculars and everything. So your supplements aren't about trying to sell your stuff to them. It's about trying to get them to get to know you. That way they'll want to sell you to everyone else. Okay kids, so I'm going to wrap it on up now. In conclusion, what you're going to want to try and do to try and get into your number one college is take as many difficult classes as you possibly can at your school. Get good grades, do test prep, get good scores, get to know your teachers, get involved, figure out where you want to apply and where you want to go, and then spend your time on your writing and on your supplement. Take as many difficult classes as you can, get involved, get to know your teachers, figure out where you actually want to spend the next four years of your life, and then spend your time and work hard on those applications because it will show. And for you rising seniors, my dad always told me that the hardest part about college is getting in. After you get in, you can relax, you get to learn about things you actually care about, you get to find yourself and all that kind of stuff. I just want you to try and keep in mind, even though I know it'll be hard, that even though society tells us that where we get into the college is the culmination of our entire lives thus far and tells us the value of ourselves at this point in our life, 
it doesn't. Admissions are weird or random. People who get into schools are lucky and you will end up going to a school that will be right for you, that you will be happy at and that you will succeed at, regardless of whether or not it was your number one choice or if it was the perfect school or the biggest name that you applied to. You will end up somewhere great because you get out what you put in and you will end up being happy at whatever college you go to, I promise. Stay tuned because the next couple of months will be a lot of college stuff because I'm super excited. Oh, I've been waiting for this my whole life. I'm so pumped. So I'll have a lot of dorm hauls and what I'm bringing to college, move-in vlogs, maybe a vlog before I go to my first party or something. In addition to just some other fun stuff like DIYs and makeup and everything. So please stick around and check out some more of my videos because I'm so excited to start creating content on YouTube and to start putting myself on the internet for the world to see. Okay kids, so now I am actually done. Remember, stay in school, practice whack, and come see me in my next video.